Hello everyone, I am Karan Mashru. Welcome to this video. So in this video, we are going to discuss solution of the problem of the day that is largest prime factor. First of all, let us start by understanding the question. So what does question say? It says that given a number n, capital N, the task is to find the largest prime factor of that number. So the question is very simple to understand. What it says is we are given an integer n and out of all the prime factors of that number, we need to return the largest prime factor for that number. So, if we look at some example for n equal to 5, the output will be 5 because 5 itself is a prime number, right? And for n is equal to 24, 24 can be represented as uh, 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 in its prime factorization, right? So, the largest prime factor for 24 will be 3 because it has two prime factors, 2 and 3, out of which 3 will be the largest, right? So, expected time complexity would be square root of n and expected space complexity would be a constant time big O of 1. The constraint says that the value of n lies between 2 and 10 key power 9. So, now, so, so the value of the n is between 2 and 10 key power 9, right? And we need to find the largest prime factor of this number. Suppose, if we represent n as Suppose we represent n into its prime factorization, okay? So it would be p1 key power k1, p2 key power k2, p3 key power k3, p4 key power k4. Suppose there are four prime factors of n, which are p1, p2, p3, and p4, and k1, k2, k3, and k4 are the powers of that prime numbers, okay? So for example, for n is equals to 24, I can write it as 2 key power 3 into 3 key power 1. So that is this format, okay? Now suppose p1 is less than p2 is less than p3 is less than p4. Before moving forwards, you need to understand one concept that for any number, it can have only one prime factor which is larger, larger than its square root. So, if we want to prove it, suppose this is the number line, this is 1, this is n and this is square root of n, okay? Suppose we have a prime factor p of n which is greater than its square root. What I said, it can have only one prime factor which is greater than the square root. Suppose there are two, p and q, right? Now, suppose this square root is m, right? Now, if we represent n into its prime factorization, then it will have some of its prime factors, then into p into q, right? Because these are the prime factor. But p into q will exceed n, p into q itself will be greater than n. Because m is the square root of n, m into m gives us square root, gives us n, right? p is greater than m, q is greater than m. So p into q will definitely be greater than n. So, it can only, it can have at max one prime factor, any number can have at max one prime factor which is greater than the square root of that number. Either all the prime factors will be in this region only or at max there will be one prime factor p. There cannot be two prime factors which are greater than square root of n, right? So, now if we come to this representation, what we can do here is we can now, if we move from i equals to 2 to m, where m is nothing but the square root of m, square root of n, the smallest factor, the smallest value of i, which will be dividing n would be p1. If I start moving from i equals to 2 to m and this is the prime factorization of n, then the first value of i in which n modulo i equals to 0, this condition satisfies would be p1 because that is the smallest prime factor in this number at present. So now, if I move i equals to 2 to m and if I get a value of i which divides n, then what I can do is, first of all, I can compare this with the answer. So answer is equals to max of answer comma i because i is a prime factor of n and we need the largest prime factor. And we can divide n k1 number of times with p1 or with i. So, what will happen is if we divide n k1 number of times, it means remove all the uh, factors of p1, then the new n would be p2 key power k2, p3 key power k3, p4 key power k4. Now, 
the smallest value of i which will divide this n would be p2 because p2 is the smallest prime factor of this n let me call it n dash here it was p1 now the smallest prime the smallest value of i as we move forwards in this loop would be p2 which is a prime factor of n so again what i'll do i'll compare it with answer and i'll remove all its factors similar thing i'll do with p3 similar thing i'll do with p4 so my all the prime factors will be removed and at the end i would have answer variable which will contain the largest prime factor also here there can be two cases one is if we do this from i equal to 2 to m at the end n can be one because all of its factors will be removed or n can be greater than 1. Now this is the case when all of its factors are present here and this is the case when one of its prime factors would be greater than square root of n. Why it will not be divided because we are moving the loop from 2 to square root of n only that is m. So if at the end n is greater than 1 it will contain the value of its factor which is the only factor greater than the square root of n and if it is equal to 1 it means that there are no factors which are greater than square root of n and we will have our answer. In this case what we need to do is we need to substitute n in the answer because that would be the largest prime factor because that is the only uh, factor greater than square root of n. For example, here I have taken two numbers n equals to 60 and n equals to 42. Here if I take the square root of n that is m so I will get 7 point something 7 point dot dot dot. So I can take it as 7. Now I will traverse from 2 to 7 and if I can divide any number by if I get a factor of 60 I will keep dividing 60 with that number. So 2 can divide 60 yes. So it will become 30 again it can be divided so it will become 50 now it cannot be divided and what will be the answer value answer value would be 2 now what is the smallest prime factor for 15 3 now we will move on to there so 15 will be divided by 3 so it will be 5 and the answer will become 3 because 3 is also a prime factor of 60 we were able to divide it here now for n equal to 4 it uh, it cannot divide 5 so we will move on here i equals to 5 can divide 5 so n will become 1 and our answer will become 5 because 5 is the largest prime factor now these two will do nothing because here n becomes 1 so the answer is 5 here is the second case where the number has a factor which is greater than square root of n or which has a prime factor which is greater than square root of n similarly n equals to 42 m would be 6 so we will traverse from 2 to 6 thus 2 divide 42 here yes, the value of n becomes 21 okay and the answer variable will become how much 2 because 2 divided 42 now 2 cannot divide further so we will move on to 3 can 3 divide yes so this will become 7 and answer will become 3 now 4 cannot divide 7 5 cannot divide 7 6 cannot divide 7 so we will move out of the loop but the value of n is not 1 it is greater than 1. So this is the only prime factor which is greater than square root of n. So it will be the largest. So I can say answer is equals to 7. So this is the concept. If I conclude, we'll move from i equals to 2 to square root of n. And if i divides uh, the number n, then we'll remove, divide it, we'll remove all the factors of uh, i from n. So each and every time, whenever we encounter any i which will divide n, it will be a prime factor and we'll keep updating the answer variable and after the loop if n is still greater than 1 it would be the largest prime factor so we will replace answer with that now let's look at the implementation so if we talk about the implementation as we saw in the concept part what we are doing is we are taking m as square root of n initially answer will be taken as 0 and then we will be moving from i equals to 2 to m and if a particular value of i divides n it would be the prime factor only as we saw and uh, we will replace first of all answer equal to max of answer comma i then until i divides n we will keep dividing it right and then at the end if n is still greater than 1 we will replace answer with n now let's submit this code so let us now run this program so let me submit it okay so we have solved the problem successfully
Now, if we look at the time complexity, the time complexity would be big O of M and inside. Now, this while loop will be at max log N base 2. So, this would be the time complexity. Space complexity would be equal to big O of 1. Now, let me explain this a bit. M is nothing but square root of N, which we are learning the for loop, right? And how does this become cis? Until we are able to remove all the prime factors of n, we keep dividing it, right? Now, smaller the factor, more the number of loops. So, what can be the smallest prime factor of any number? 2. Suppose a number is made up of only 2. Suppose uh, n is nothing but 2 key power k, then this will, this will run k number of times until n becomes 1. So, what k is nothing but what? k is nothing but log n base 2. So, the maximum number of times this will run is log n base 2. If the factors are bigger in number, it will be less than that. But this is the maximum. So, the time complexity would be big O of square root of n into log n base 2 and space complexity would be big O of 1. I hope you have understood this question completely. Thank you.